Welcome to the Coach's Show with Coach Kevin Ramsey. Now, Coach, CAU fell 24 to 27 against Benedict. Talk to us a little bit about the game. Well, that was a very, uh, that was a tough one. Right. You know, a tough loss, homecoming, but what was the most disturbing, we looked at, uh, you know, the stats. You know, we right. had about 400 plus yards, they had 200 something. Mm -hmm. We had 22 first downs, they had 12. Um, you know, but the, the fine line was they had, they were three for three in the red zone, and we was four or seven. Right. And then the most disappointing, we was one of six with field goals, but we had two up block that would have won a game for us. So, um, and we had the ball at the five yard line going in, you know, to, to win it. So, man, uh, the effort of these kids, you know, they just keep fighting and keep fighting. But, uh, you know, we, we let that one get away. Talk about how back and forth you feel the battle was. Well, you know, I thought offensively we, we moved it. You know, we gave up uh, two big plays that I consider big plays. They threw a fleet flicker over the top. Right, that, yeah. That shouldn't happen. You know, that's that's odd, but it did. Right. Um, I thought that when we had it in the red zone, you know, primarily at the five-yard line, man, you, you got to smell the blood. You got to get the ball in the end zone. We got to score. We got to score. And, uh, you know, the second half points offensively was only three points, and we better than that because we was moving the ball, getting it in the red zone. You know, I thought both quarterbacks, starting off with Odoms, you know, running the zone read. Mm -hmm. You know, he got it down at the first series, and we punched it in. And, of course, when he left the ball game, uh, Charles came in. and Did his thing. kind of lit it up. Yeah. Right. Now, what were your favorite plays? Like, first off, let's start with offense. What was your favorite offensive play of the game? Favorite offensive play, man. You know, it's a, it, it's. A, I think every time that, uh, you know, our receivers, you know, made just great catches, I think about uh, Trey Wilson on the sideline. He right. went up top and got, you know, went and grabbed it. That was a big, big time play. And then uh, Corey King's on the sideline. Mm -hmm. you know, that was third oh, yeah. long. And, yeah. and uh, you know, big plays are, are made by big players that, that comes up and change the momentum of the ball game. And those two plays change the momentum. Sanders also had a, a really good, you know, catches during the game, and so did Banks. Yes, yeah. you know, one thing I want to mention about Sanders and, uh, you know, our whole team and the school, we really send uh, condolences. You know, he had lost his father mm. the, the, the night before. Touchdown! His mother didn't mention it to him to after the ball game. Right. But, but uh, you know, yeah, he's shining. and he's one of those guys, his leadership, He's really stepping up. He's really becoming a, a molded leader for us uh, on and off the field. And we talked about him a lot last game and how strong he was, is mentally. And, and you know, and what we talked about, you know, with Josh Banks, I thought we got the, when we get the ball in his hands, you know, he he makes things happen. You know, uh, I think we just got to continue to you know spread the icing around, so to speak. Right. And uh, when they roll up on one particular receiver, we we got other weapons as well. What about defensively? What was your favorite play? Defensively, I, I thought that uh, it was the third downs because they were only uh, they were only three or ten on third down. Mm. I thought third downs we were big, and you know we got the offense the ball back, you know, and uh, and I want to just add on the special teams because we had two partially blocked punts too that that kind of gave the offense great field position, and then defensively I, I just think that uh, overall. Uh, you know, we had Mixon, you know, a true freshman still at the Mike linebacker for us. Right. Uh, he's really taking steps and really growing on that defense side of the ball. And I posed a question to you about the back and forth, but another game that has a lot of back and forth is volleyball. Now, women's volleyball is 8-7, and seven, and they're on a five-game winning streak right now. Here are some highlights from their game this week.
We're back and we're talking about offense. Stafford, 397 yards, two TDs. Talk about it. Well, I mean, we know what he's made out of. I mean, you know, right. from the spring when he got here, uh, Charles has made uh, uh, some throws that I've seen him make in practice, and it's just about execution game time. Mm -hmm. and, uh, he came in hot, you know, and he had the hot hand. I thought that, uh, you know, the receivers made catches for him once he got it in range. Definitely. But nevertheless, uh, you know, his arm we was, was riding us there, keeping the movement going on. Primarily in third and long situations, he was really connecting some passes that moved, moved the chains and gave us a chance to keep uh, drive sustained. And, uh, you know, him running the, the zone, keep two running the ball, course, yeah. and being a threat uh, makes a difference. Now, Odom started the game off for us, and then he went down. Will he return in this game against Albany? Well, you know, he had a, a ham, and, uh, you know, he's getting treatment for it. Um, you know, and he's a tough cookie. So, you know, Charles is there right now. You know, it looks like we'll be starting Charles this game. Of course, that's getting, going back home, too. You know, he played at Westover High School in Albany. I know we'll get to that. Right. But uh, uh, Odom was, uh, is day by day with him. So uh, we, we made sure that P.J., uh, got his reps in, you know, P.J. Sanford got his right. reps in right. uh, this morning. Definitely. Now, for Stafford, this game that he just had, was a, he had 170 yards better than his best game that he had against, I believe it was Kennesaw. Mm -hmm. So what is that like to see him improve every single game? Well, for me, like I said, you know, offensively, you know, it's about blocking. You know, and I yeah. thought the protection that he got, you know, uh, that's the offensive line and running backs and tight ends and the like. Uh, lock, I mean, he, lock, can he can really, lock, he can really uh, make, make things happen. And our protection was, was, was stellar in this particular ball game. We give him or Odom a chance to stay in the pocket. I think they are a threat. Now, transitioning from passing to rushing, with the rushing game, talk about how that went this game. Well, you know, we always want Roger to have that, that high number. I mean, right. um, you got 16. Kinda, yeah, but yeah. we, we kind of, you know, and then it was a different uh, ball game. You it know, was. We, we had to do what we had to do to win it. Right. And uh, if throwing the ball is moving it, that, that's great. But I thought Roger had some big runs, and I really wanted it in his hand, man. First right. and five from the five, I'll give it to him three times in a row. You know, we just got to we just gotta get him to rock once we get that close uh, to the goal line. Right, and what I liked with the coaching, you didn't, you didn't make a – a decision just to, okay, we're just going to run it until we can't run it no more. You said the pass is working, we're going to pass it, which I, I just appreciate that as a fan to see that. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, with the, the, the you try to get matchups, and mm -hmm. I think uh, when you got linebackers trying to match up, mm -hmm. uh, you know, against our tight ends and, and, and Felix and uh, DeAndre O'Neal, I mean, those guys, they could make things happen when you get those matchups against linebackers. And when we go to our empty sets and our four wides, right. you get linebackers matched up on those guys. We feel like we can win those battles. Of course, because they're faster. Yes. They're faster, and we're catching a lot of stuff, as we did in this game. Now, after we catch it and after we score with the field goals, talk a little bit about that. Well, you know, Carlos one of the best kickers in Division II football. Right. And, uh, you know, um, he, hit, he hit the 33-yarder. Um, you know, he kind of shanked one, but – the two that were blocked were the most disappointing. Right. And then we had one that was, I, I thought he had missed, but coming back and watching it on film, it was partially blocked. So, you know, uh, you know that's a 12-point swing, man, and that, that blows the game wide open. And even to the very end there, when we had the ball at the five, field goal would take it in overtime. So, well, we really, really uh, got to make sure we're protecting and holding strong uh, in our PAT and field goal attempts. Now, transitioning from offense and special teams to defense, talk a little bit about what the defense did for us this game. Well, we knew that the quarterback, you know, they came in number one in pass, you right. know, passing. We were number one in pass defense. And uh, like I say, other than a free flicker play, we can we contain that passing game. And, uh, you know, we lost contain on the quarterback, on the quarterback scramble. We know he scrambled around a lot. He did. But one time we had a blitz and we lost contain and he scored on that particular one. But overall, uh, we, we kind of disrupted some rhythm, uh, I thought, in some of our coverages, and that's why we was off the field on third downs. Like, again, uh, 3 of 10 they were on third down conversions, and that, that made a difference. I thought we, primarily in the second half, we established the field goal position. I mean, you know, um, Ty Woods did a great job of pinning them back inside did, yeah. the, you know, 15. Right. Of course, you know, with the punts that we was having, and our punt coverage team was doing an excellent job as well. 
Now, Rodgers, Walton, Tate, and Prophet all had six tackles, and everyone else was pretty close in tackles. So what's that like seeing everybody? Because we, we usually talk about a top three. Mm -hmm. So it's like 10, 9, 8, and everybody else getting like three. It was pretty much even across the board. And, you know, when you play an offense that's spraying the ball around like that, yes, yes. that that's a, has a lot to do with it. You right. know, they very dimensional stuff. Like with Tate, I can tell you, when you tell me about his tack tackles, I know there was a lot of hitch routes on the outside. Uh, and the like when, uh, you know, I thought it's times we had interception opportunities. Right. I know uh, Zeke wanted to take one back, and Tate, one hit him right in the hand. Morgan, too. Yeah, so, you know, right. we was flying around. And like you say, when you get assortment of guys making plays, that is big. Now, what do you want to see the defense approve upon in this upcoming game? Well, I, I just want to see us gain tackle, you know. And when I say gain tackle, it's that tackle where you got to come in Sunday to, to have uh, the coaches kind of have arguments on which guy made the tackle. That's a good thing when you say, well, he was there first, he was there second, when they collapse on it because the, the solo tackles are easy, you know what I mean? That's the guy. But when you gain tackle, you're getting three and four hats around the football. That's what I like to see because – we get that many hats around the ball, we're really disrupting a lot of offense and we create more havoc. And when you create more havoc, you create more turnovers. Now, they had a problem passing the ball. What are you doing in practice with the DBs and even the linebackers in protection just to have them focus up and say, y'all not passing nothing today? Yeah, our guys, you know, we, we play a, a tight match coverage, we do. You know, we're not just a, a zone drop off. You know, we match up in those zones. And, uh, you know, we play a lot of man free. So, you know, w we always tell our guys to win the one-on-one -on -one battles expectantly. And, uh, you know, that's been a winning edge for us. And, and we're going to continue to try to create havoc by having guys play uh, tight coverage. Now for the D-line, because we had Cameron Rogers on the episode last week. So what's that like just to see the D-line doing what they're doing up front, holding it down? Well, I mean, you know, when you got a scrambling quarterback, we had to play a lot of those guys. We had to get a, a great rotation in right. with our D-line. And, you know, Cam is the, you know, up front there, he's our end. You know, he's the, he's the uh, column on the outside, the rook, if you're talking in terms of a, right. of a chess game. Okay. And, uh, you know, <clears throat> excuse me, he holds his own out there. And when he get going, the, the younger kids up under him kind of get expired when they get their snaps and to give him a blow. So what's it like having all those leaders on the defense? Well, it's big. I think it's contagious, you mm -hmm. know. And uh, when you got that much leadership, you know, now you, you see the younger guys as they continue to get water that they are uh, upcoming, you know, leaders to be, so to speak, because Morgan and Cam – and Zeke been providing the leadership that's been outstanding. Now, as a fan, I'm used to seeing the defense score. So will we see the defense score in this upcoming game? Against man, Albany? that's the goal, man. Yeah. Score on defense. And uh, CMT is ideal. It's not country music, television, but it's create more turnovers. So we, <laughs> we get a lot of CMT uh, screamed out. You know, CMT, CMT. Right. That's create more turnovers. Definitely. When you turn it over, you score. That's right. And speaking of scores, here are some more scores from around the league. We're back with the player of the week, DeAndre McNeil. First off, tell us where you're from. I'm from Streetport, Louisiana. Okay. Why did you want to come to Clark? Uh, well, out of all my office, I kind of, when I came on my visit here, I kind of felt like home. Like, it was a family thing, and it was not so about, like, just football. So I felt like they wanted me, they wanted me to succeed in life. Right. Now, you're not the first player on the show to say that. So what exactly is this family feel that everyone's, talking about so like when I first came here like it was just a bond like we instantly clicked with everything coach Ramsey bought a lot of energy he knew my name not too many coaches like know your name off the bat like that so like it kind of made me feel like home like he was just supporting me and it's like man you're gonna be a player and all this right and not too many coaches know your background and, and stuff like that so, he t so what you're saying is he took his time yeah. to get to know you you know as more than just a football player try to get to know you as a person yeah correct right 
Now, what's your major here and what do you want to do with that? Well, my major is education. I really didn't want to major in education. I wanted to major in sports medicine. Right. But they didn't have it here at Clark. So right. I wanted, I did education because, you know, I like teach people, like, help them build their knowledge like I had to build my knowledge too. Okay, so you, so it's just, you want to be a teacher or you want to be a professor? Which one? Well, it really don't matter. It really don't matter. <laughs> you, you, just, you just love to teach. Yeah. I respect that. Now, what is your game day routine? Because for me, when I used to play, I had to have my little playlist going and I needed to just be in the corner by myself. So what... What's that like for you? Yeah, it's the same thing. Well, I wake up, you know, I pray. Of course. And then um, after that, I get focused, go over my plays, my assignments, what I need to do. Mm -hmm. And then I put my music in, kind of stay to myself, don't mess with nobody. And then when it's time to play, it's go time. Now, you talked about assignments. When I played, I was a DN, so it's really not too much we got to do. We either going here, we going here. We got to get to QB, get to the running back, get a sack. But with you, you, you got to do out routes, in routes, nines, eights, whatever, whatever y'all be doing. So talk about that. What is it like to be a receiver? It's actually fun. Yeah. And you actually got to be smart, too, because you got to know what type of releases to take. Mm. And, you know, assignments, you got to know who to block, because sometimes we have switch blocks, and you got to know, like, how far to break off your route. And you got to really, it's just fun to me. Like, right. you got to have, you got to think. You got to be a thinking. That's why you want to be a teacher. I respect <laughs> that. Now, what is your favorite route to run? Like, if, I, if I'm playing, okay, not me playing. Let's say <laughs> let's say somebody on your team is playing QB. What's your favorite route to run? Oh, it got to definitely be the fade ball. Okay. And why, why is that? Because uh, I'm a big big body and uh, I'm tall. So, like, a jump ball with me with most corners is, is a touchdown or a big play. So, if I was to play corner and go up against you, you, you would get it on me? Of course, most definitely. <laughs> why, why you got to say that in front of everybody? You could have lied. You could have lied. It's all good. It's all good. Now, you're a freshman. This was the homecoming game. What was that like in the atmosphere, seeing everybody? Well, I didn't play homecoming games. Well, of course, but I'm saying j just to experience it. Oh, it was wonderful. Like, it was a lot of people. Like, I ain't never been around a lot of people that much. Like, it was a lot of alumni. It was just a fun experience overall. Now, you're a freshman on this team, and you've got Banks, you've got Sanders, you got King, you got all these guys to look up to. What's that like to have them? Are they are they in your ear? Talk to us about them. Well, uh, most likely it's Josh Banks. He's like my role model because, you know, we kind of like the same size. Right. And, you know, he kind of just motivate me and push me and tell me to be better than him. And, you know, he kind of, because when he, he's gone next year, so it's basically going to be my, my time to shine. So he basically teach me the in and outs of college football. So is there pressure in that or you just feel excitement? Like, wow, like. I really got this guy who's one, one of the premier players on this team telling me I'm about to take his spot. You know, I'm about to be, you're about to be in his spot coming up next year. It's a great feeling. Like, I'm excited because, like, I get to actually be a leader like I was in high school. You know, I'm more touches and stuff, so it's just exciting. Got you. So, after watching this game, off the top of your head, what was your favorite play of the game? Well... Uh, my favorite play of the game will be when Felix Jones, he caught in the middle. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, no, that, that, it was crazy. It was crazy. Yeah, that's my favorite play, one of my favorite plays. I really didn't get to watch the game like that, but i uh, seen that clip. It kind of it was a big play. I wish he would have scored, though. Right, but <laughs> it still was a good play nonetheless. Yeah. Now talk to us about having two QBs. You have Odom and you have Stafford. Is it a different feel for both of them to so are different players, or is it pretty much just the same, you going up and getting the ball? It's the same feeling to me because, you know, we practice with both of them, so they both get the same amount of reps and things. And it's just like, it's kind of a different feeling because, you know, Odom, he more of a scrambler, so it's like, you know, if he getting blitz, he out of there. Charles, yeah. he'll stand there and try to look for you. Definitely. So it's, it's, so it's pretty much just, it's, it's different, but either way, you're going to go up and catch it. Yeah, Now, much. you had a touchdown against Kennesaw, was it? Yes, How it was. was that, scoring? It was, it was fun. Like, I say it was one of my favorite moments because that's my first college touchdown. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And it, what, what, what's that? Like, what's that feeling like? You, are you pumped? I, yeah, I was so excited. I was so turned. Like <laughs> you don't know. <laughs> Bro, like, I, I don't know. I don't. <laughs> like it was just like, man, I really did like the first freshman ever to score like, oh, this season. Like I was like proud of myself. It was an accomplishment. Well, I know you're gonna keep on scoring, and I thank you so much for that. And speaking of scores, here are some more scores from around the league. And coming up next, we have the Pioneer of the Week. Our Pioneer 
this week, Jackie Slater. Jackie Slater was drafted in 1976 by the Los Angeles Rams. His 259 regular season games played were the most ever by an offensive lineman. When he retired, his 20 seasons with one NFL team was an NFL record. A popular player for his work ethic and leadership skills, Slater was a seven-time Pro Bowler. A veteran of 18 playoff games, including Super Bowl XIV, Slater was regarded as one of the game's premier linemen. Slater was inducted into the Hall of Fame in 2001. Our pioneer of the week, Jackie Slater. Coach, you yeah, remember, remember Jackie Slater? Yeah, definitely. You know, one of the pioneers of offensive line play mm -hmm. that was a very athletic offensive lineman. So that was that's what I remember about him. That's why he played that game for 20 years with the same same team. That's unheard of. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and, and he could have easily been a tight end. That's how athletic this guy was. Now let's talk a little bit about Albany. Last year, we beat them 44-36. Well, last year, you know, man, homecoming, it was homecoming a year ago, mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, they came in, uh, you know, they had beat Tuskegee, they was on a roll, and I right. thought that uh, our offense got rolling early, and, uh, you know, we put a lot of points on the board, and we had some turnovers defensively that was pivotal. Right. Now, for this year, do you think the game will be as high scoring as it was last year? Well, we definitely hope uh, one side of it would be high school and the other one right, right, exactly yeah. right. <laughs> but, uh, you know, uh, they, they rushed the ball very well. You know, they, they put a lot of yardage on Morehouse last week. Mm -hmm. You know, had 41 points, 41 to 19. They rushed for over 200 yards. They threw for 180-something, and they have a, a rotation of three backs that run the ball hard. So – about just dive a little bit deeper into their scheme and what they do offensively and defensively. Well, they, they, they're spread offense, but they run the option. You know, okay. their quarterback is like additional running back slash quarterback, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, you know, he have a lot of rushes, and then, you know, you have the, the three running backs that I was mentioning, uh, mentioning earlier, and then they have a, a tight end package, too, that they, uh, they'll get in and have two tight ends on the field at the same time. Who are their key players? You talked about the running backs and the QB, but who is, like, if you had to break it down to about three, who would they be? Well, if they're, they're, they're top receiver, uh, I think Johnson, I mean, you know, okay. he, he could make things happen. The basketball players were well, very athletic. So you're going to jump up and get there. Yeah, right? yeah he'll, he'll make things happen. And then, the, you know, their running backs, like I mentioned before, man, those guys, uh, you know, you'll see four, mm. 28, and 32, you okay. know, those are their numbers, and they, they, they kind of get after it. And then, you know, defensively, they, uh, you know, they pretty scrappy. You know, um, their defensive coordinator is a kid I coached at, Carson Newman, about oh. a, a decade ago, uh, Daenerys Waits. And, uh, you know, he's going to be moving at front, and they'll be zone dog and bringing zone blitzes. Definitely. Is there anybody a standout on that uh, defense, or just it's just? Yes, a I mean you know they they're D tackles. You know they they pretty stout on, on the inside okay. with their defensive tackles, and then you know they're they're a bunch where they uh, do a lot of zone blitzes, so they'll come from all directions in uh, in their blitz game. Would that be will the D lineman give us trouble up front, or is that? Well, we'll get problem? twists that we got to be able to pick up. You know they got okay. a lot of games up front that they'll be running that our offensive line got to be able to pick up and. You know, we, we're we in the middle season now. Right. At this point in the season, it's like what haven't you haven't seen, you know. So exactly. we've just seen it, yeah. So do you think it will be more pass-oriented or run-oriented? Definitely the run. Okay. You know, All establishing right. the run. Uh, this would be probably, uh, I, I think they're probably up front the most physical team in our league. Mm. So it sounds like a lot of Roger Thomas getting a lot of carries. Well. Yes, and then yeah. uh, conversely, their offensive line is – is, is pretty big, and they'll be they'll be looking to pound it. Now, Odom went down in this past game. Will he return? He's been day by day. You okay. know, we've been getting around. He's been, uh, you know, icing that hamstring. And, mm -hmm. you know, our trainer's been doing a good job. You know, he's been getting rehab uh, morning, noon, and then at night. So, that's a, it's a day by day. Now, Albany has averaged 35 points in the last three games. Do you think they'll be averaging 35 against us? Well, we certainly look to fly around and keep them out of the end zone. Right. Uh, you know, that's the game. And, you know, to create some three and outs and create some sacking and longs. You know, like I say, they've been uh, rushing the ball uh, very well. And, uh, you know, the most uh, outstanding stat that I saw when they got their running game going, mm. it's like the Morehouse game. You know, in 60 minutes, they had that ball 37 minutes. And we don't we don't want that. You know, we want, want the ball in our offense hands and we want to – dominate the, the time of possession. So 
Would that is that good clock management that has to be done on the offensive side of the ball and then just three announce on defense? Well, you know, it? when you're running the ball, uh, the clock keeps running. Of course. Uh, incomplete pass, you know, it stops right. it. But when you got a successful run game, that clock is just getting ate up, you and know. So, so they, it just keep running. It keeps time. running, right. it keeps running, it keeps running, yeah. So the deal is to stop the running game to get the three and outs, you know. Of course. You, you look at a, a drive of, of, of 12, 12 plays and 10 of those plays are runs. You know, you, you're looking at seven minutes easily chopped off the clock. Right. Now, are they ready for our defense? Because we, we got Morgan, we got Edmonds, we got Rodgers, we got Tate, we got Profit. We got a lot of guys, a lot of hats being put on the ball. So how will the swarm stop them this game? That's what's going to be pivotal. Right. Us to get a game tackle, you know. Of course. And, uh, you know, we got to get a piece of something. I don't care if it's the huff. We got to go, go true at it, you know. Right. We really got to get guys around the ball. Now, will CMT be on that day? Definitely, you know, we got to create the turnovers, right. uh, you know, with the quarterbacks and the strip attempts, you know, hitting the running back. And then, too, uh, with our special team play, which is that's going to be pivotal as well. Now, you talked a little, me and you were talking briefly before this uh, show started. Talk to me about where we stand, CAU, around the league. Well, I mean, you know, uh, we, we need to win out. We need to win out. I mean, that's just it. You know, we need to take care of business this week, you know, against Albany State and uh, everything else. You know, you look for Mohouse to go in and, and, and take care of business with Benedict. Right. And then we look to, after we do what we do to uh, Albany State, yes. uh, we need Albany State to go in. And, uh, you know, that's the scenario. It's a, it's a spin spin. You know, like I said, uh, two years ago, uh, you know, we lost to – uh, Fort Valley and triple overtime, mm -hmm. and that that one particular ball game made the difference. They went to the championship and we didn't. So there's all types of scenarios that are get caked out all the way to the end of the week in our in our league. Coach, thank you so much again. This has been the Coach's Show with Coach Kevin Ramsey. I'm Frank Jefferson, and we'll see you next time.